Welcome to Chapel. Today we will be focusing on Jesus as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last. Jesus is the first and the last. John 1, 1 through 2 tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Let us begin Chapel. Last week in Las Vegas, we had our first note. That got us thinking, what do you remember about the first time you saw snow? I was like seven and I was in my neighborhood actually and the snow started coming down and I had no idea that it was going to be like anything like this. It only lasted for a minute, but this seems to be a little different. <laughs> I was like young and we went up to Big Bear to ski and it was like really fluffy and fun. I grew up here in Las Vegas and it snowed when I was seven years old and we Got a snow day from school and we built snowmen in the front yard. It was fun. My first time skiing snow was in second grade in Beijing. It was like negative 10 degrees. Well, the first time that I ever saw snow, I was in Brian Head because obviously it doesn't snow here except for today. And um, my mom really likes to ski, so we were like skiing, but I was like three, so like I can't ski. And so I was like in the snow and I really hated like all the clothing, so I started like taking off my jacket and stuff and just like rolling around. So that's what do you remember? Uh, I remember being at school and we went to school and there was like snow piled up in the amphitheater uh, but then the next day we had a snow day and it was like 80 degrees. Nice. <laughs> uh, first time I saw snow I was pretty young. Um, one of the more memorable times a few years ago I had to walk across the field at the church I worked at because I lived on campus to put the announcement that we weren't having church that week and it was like knee-high snow so that was a lot of fun. Uh, about five years ago, it was pretty cool. I was like, like a little dog that wanted to go outside, but yeah. The first time I saw snow, I was living in Louisiana. It snowed, and I was probably like two, and yeah. Boy, it. <laughs> um, the first time I ever saw snow was when I went up to Big Bear. <laughs> And I saw uh, snow for the first time with my sister. Um, that was like when I was like four, I think. I don't know. Uh, I think the first time when I was in snow was, um, I think it was like 2008, like in like, elementary school. When I was about to go to school and like the snow was covering up my bass hoop and all that. It was pretty cool. Uh, I, I grew up with snow in Denver, but the, I just remember going sledding all the time with my family and building ramps and seeing how high we could go off the ramp without getting hurt that it was like at school so it was like pretty fun and everybody was out there and I just like to like build snowmen. Um, the first time I saw snow was in North Carolina. I was in preschool. It covered the city and that's also the first time I went sledding down my driveway. So. Um, probably not because I don't know but I think it was in my neighborhood and my brother and my mom and everybody was taking pictures and just they were all outside and it was all over the tables and the chairs and it was just super nice. Uh, probably uh, the day I was born in Indiana, it was in December so there's probably a lot of snow around. Nice. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> there is no other God besides our one and only God. God is the king of his people and he redeemed us. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We see in Isaiah 44, 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. God redeems us and we should take comfort and confidence that he will fulfill his promises to save us. He is the one and only true God that no other gods in this world can accomplish. Please pray with me. Dear God, you are almighty and powerful. Thank you for everything you do for us. You are the beginning and the end. Please help us to keep our focus on you and the cross. Amen. Jesus won. He defeated death and the devil, beginning and end. He was there at the beginning, and he saved us in the end. Death and darkness have no hold over us. We are free. We can praise the Lord and celebrate our glorious victory over sin. Please sing Light of the World together with Praise Ground.
We all struggle to know who or what to put our faith in because the world is constantly trying to tempt us into having faith in things that would eventually fail us. Worldly pleasures may give us satisfaction for a little while, but God gives us everlasting life as a free gift that lasts forever and will never fail us. Listen to the words of Jesus in Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation is a book of comfort and promise that our suffering on earth is temporary and that in heaven there will be no more tears, worry, or doubt. God is with us in the beginning and in the end for all time. I don't think I can make it. I keep running, but I can't see the ending. How am I supposed to finish this on my own? The sin of this world makes our suffering seem like it will last forever. But in the midst of our suffering, Jesus goes with us because he has already finished the race for us. We do not have to endure it alone. Dear sisters and brothers of Faith Lutheran High School, Las Vegas, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm Reverend Micah Glenn, and I'm the Director of Recruitment at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. And it's my job to find people at different stages in life who are willing to consider a church work as a profession, and I encourage them to pursue that. Hopefully they, or, or maybe even you, end up studying here at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis to become pastors and deaconesses for the church. Uh, the word of God that engages us today comes from the Revelation 21 verse 6 reading that we've already been considering, kind of focusing on uh, God's words where he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, I am the beginning and the end. You know, when I was a kid, my, my parents would drive me crazy when they would answer one of my questions with, with that phrase, because I said so. And I didn't like that phrase and it drove me crazy because it meant that the conversation was over. They've had the last word. It's done. The conversation is done. So naturally, uh, I do the same thing with my kids, with my seven, five, and four-year-old children. Uh, when I've answered one of their questions with no, and they respond by saying why, I say because I've said so. And they take it to mean that the conversation is over, that I've had the last word, it's done. And there's no amount of, of cute looks or little cuddles that, that are going to change my mind. In, in the text that we are considering from Revelation 21, God, our Father, uh, those words have the same ring to them. They, they have the same kind of force. God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You see, God not only has the first word, he also has the last word. He has the last word over all things. Uh, what he says is final, and nothing can change that. And in these words, these words of finality, of, of a thing being done, he's speaking to something specific. The, the thing that he's speaking to is sin. Sin and its effects on us, and sin and its effects on the world. You see, sin is a condition. It's an illness, an infection that, that infects all of us, everyone, from birth. And it comes with consequences, uh, the worst of those consequences being death. But God does not let, nor will he let, sin have the final word over you and me. Nor will he let sin have the final word over the world. And to ensure that, and because God's love for us is, is so boundless and limitless, he sent his son Jesus into the world for you and for me. He sent his son Jesus into the world for the world. And he sent Jesus into the world to die in our pla place for the price of our sins. While Jesus was on the cross, he, he said the words, it is finished, which are kind of echoed in the beginning of Revelation 21, 6. The it being sin and its effects on the world. And Jesus had the ultimate last word over death and sin when he didn't stay dead, but rose from the grave. 
and not because of faith that Jesus gives us to have faith in him, death can't have the last word over us. You see, Jesus brings us into the stream of living water through baptism in him, in his name, so that we can fully participate in the victory that he won for us over death. In other words, through baptism, Jesus gives us the power to have the last word over sin and death so that we, like him, will live forever. So it's tough and there's a tension because we still live in a broken world where people still sin, where we still sin, where people struggle and where people still unfortunately die. But you see, this, this is not the end. And the brokenness of the world won't get the last word. God has already had the last word. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And the last word that he has for you and for me, that last word is, is a word of love. Love without limits and love that is boundless. You see, when Jesus had those final words, it is finished. He meant it. He meant it then and its effects for you and me, for our salvation, for our forgiveness, still work today. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's celebrate our great reminder and promise keeper together in song. Please join Praise Man in singing Waymaker.
conquered sin through his death and resurrection. This is the good news that we as Christians get to celebrate every day. He kept his promise made in the beginning and defeated the devil in the end. Okay, it's time for Student of the Month for the month of January 2021 as nominated and voted on by the faculty and staff. She is poised, polite, professional, and an example of God's grace. She's hardworking in all classes and leads with quiet confidence in the theater conservatory. She is respected by her peers and beloved by her teachers and directors. She is a clear choice because she is the definition of what we hope some of Faith Lutheran students are. Emma Galvin. Our next student. He's a top-notch student that is eager to perform at his best, whether it is in academics, music, or athletics. He is conscientious and he has a servant heart. He is well respected and liked by his peers. He is a young man that has integrity, Zachary Boots. Congratulations to both of those. Your gifts will be forthcoming. Thank you. Today is our Big Room's January Teacher of the Month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Renee. <laughs> This teacher is a favorite math teacher of many students. He's very encouraging and funny in the classroom and often gives students treats. He cares about his students' well-being, <laughs> makes sure that all the students feel welcome in his classroom, as well as comfortable and excited to learn. He makes sure all questions and comments are heard and valued, and always responds with a smile on his face. He even sends individual emails for students to check in, encourage them, and praise them. Teacher of the month of January is Mr. Renee. Thank you. Go in peace knowing that even though it seems at times that our suffering is going on forever, we can find comfort in Jesus' words on the cross. It is finished from John 19 when he makes it clear that our salvation is completed in his death. <laughs> 